Hey everyone, today I'm excited to bring you another EV charger review. Many of you probably saw my review of the Evico J1772 EV charger. I was a really big fan of it. Well, they actually have a NAX version, one with the new NACS connector, basically the Tesla connector that most OEMs are moving to. And I definitely wanted to take a look at it, see how it works, see how it does, because I think this is definitely one that you might want to consider if you want to future-proof your home's EV charging. Now some quick highlights on the charger itself. This is a 40 amp plug-in style EV charger that utilizes a NEMA 1450 plug, which is pretty standard for EV chargers. They also offer a hardwired version as well if you wanna unlock the 48 amp charging, which gives you a little bit faster speeds. I'll link both of them in the description for you guys. This has a nice and long 25 foot charging cable and it's their Gen 2 charger, which has improved Wi-Fi connectivity, a new reset button, an optimized holster, that kind of thing. And again, this has the NAX connector, including the port opening button. And it has a nice long 37 inch input cable from the NEMA 1450 plug. Some EV chargers have a very short input cable, so it's nice to see a longer one here that makes it easier to set up. Now with this being a 40 amp charger, it would need to be on a 50 amp circuit since you can only run continuous load at 80%. It can be installed on lower amperage circuits, but you'll need to make sure you lower the amperage in the app. This is also an Energy Star certified unit and it is ETL listed for safety, which is good to see. And the enclosure meets NEMA 4 and IP66 standards for resistance to the elements. Included in the box is everything you need, including the EV charger itself, mounting brackets, the holster, and an installation kit. Looking at everything up close, it all seems very high quality, like the other EVCO EV charger I reviewed. The NEMA 1450 plug looks good. The NAX connector looks and feels nice. The contacts inside the connector look good. And it just seems really good quality. The holster is a similar design to what was included in the J1772 charger, and it looks good. And again, we have the manual and installation hardware. Looking at the cables up close, you can see we have 10 gauge wiring going to the connector. It's not the thickest wiring, but it should be fine. Looking at the cable to the plug, it's definitely thicker and looks like it has six gauge wiring inside, so that's good. On the side of the controller here, you can see the charging status indicator light information as well as some specs on the charger. Now to test it out. All right, I got it set up here and it looks good. I do like the design of their holsters. It's very easy to use. And the unit itself looks good. It's not overly bulky like some other EV chargers. Now, since I don't have a vehicle with a native NAX port, I'm going to use my NAX to J1772 adapter to test the charging. If anything, this would add an additional failure point and a point to add heat, so I don't see any problem testing it this way. Plugging it in, it does fit this adapter perfectly. We'll go ahead and plug it in the car. Looking inside, you can see we're immediately up to 9.4 kilowatts, which is basically 40 amps. You can see it's requesting right at 40 amps there, so that's good. We'll let it charge for a couple hours and we'll see how it does. Now I'll go ahead and check the temperatures here too using my HSF Tools thermal camera. You can see starting out, everything's around 82 degrees Fahrenheit for a max temperature, so that's good. Looking at the connector and cable by the car, it's basically the same. So like I said, we'll let it charge and we'll see how it does. Now while it's charging, I'll go ahead and show you guys the Evico app. You can download it from your phone's app store and it's very easy to get your EV charger connected. You just add it via Bluetooth, put in your Wi-Fi information, 
And there you go. Here you can adjust the amperage. You can see charging information, adjust notifications, set electricity plans, see charge history, set up charging schedules, that sort of thing. I've been using the J1772 version for a while and the app works quite well with no bugs or issues. So it's definitely good. All right, it's been a couple of hours now and we'll see how it's doing. We're still at 9.4 kilowatts and everything is looking good. Checking the temperatures here. We're now showing a maximum of around 92, 94 degrees by the car and the connector here. The controller is up to around 103 degrees. And the cable coming out of the connector is 122 degrees, which isn't hot by any means when it comes to this kind of thing. So yeah, everything is working well with no issues at all, which I pretty much expected based off of my experience with the J1772 EV charger. This unit's also rated a perfect 5.0 on both Amazon and their website. And again, I can see why. As for pricing, it's certainly competitive coming in at $426 on their website and on Amazon. I'll post links to both in the description for you guys, but it's definitely a solid option all around. And it does come with a three-year warranty as well. So anyway, let me know what you guys think about the EV Konax EV charger. Let me know if you have any questions about it. And if you guys like this video, be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more content. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.